In today's video, we're going to bypass this hand meter. And it's not that I don't think that the hand meter is a viable gauge. I actually prefer it to a voltmeter. Since that is the main, it's integral to the main circuit between the charging of the alternator and directly to the battery, all of the current going to the battery when it is low or under extreme use is going through this gauge. They have a tendency when you overwork them or overload them with lights, in this case a, a pretty powerful hydraulic pump that's electric. They have a tendency of getting a little hot and uh, burning the ends off the connections and potentially starting a fire. So today we're going to bypass it real fast. Short video here uh, showing you just how much draw we're putting on that battery and how much current we're pushing through this ammeter uh, or this ammeter and uh, then we'll get into it the bypass. It's super quick, super simple. So let's get started up here. So as you see, charging the battery for the amps we pulled when we started. And shortly we're going to realign right back to zero, which means the battery's full charge and there's no real draw on the system. Um, get it out up here and warm. Then we're going to kick the hydraulic pump in and I'll show you just how much load it's putting on this battery. See, we're pegging that thing plumb out. So as you can see, you don't want to be running that much of a load through a gauge, through an and meter, that is not originally designed for the load. So we're going to bypass this real quick. I really don't want to have the dash catch on fire one day when I'm dumping some stuff off the back of this truck. And this is a simple step to avoid it. The first step in this whole process is to disconnect the battery. So we're going to come right over here, negative terminal, disconnected. The next step is to contort yourself up underneath the dash. It's easier to come in from the passenger side to get your head in there if you're a larger individual. Once you've gotten yourself under the dash, it's easier to look up the anemeter is the two larger connections there. One is red and one is yellow. The bottom of the gauge on the lower side of the dash panel on the passenger side. Once you've located the two studs on the end meter underneath the dash, it's easier to put your hand in over here by your vent controls and come in at an angle up to the bottom of that gauge and you can lay on the seat and loosen the two nuts. When you get done with your surgery, it should look like this. Both factory leads on one pole of the end meter. And don't forget to take your wrench out of there. Once you have everything hooked up, reconnect your battery. And then you want to fire your Jeep up. 
and verify with a multimeter that you're charging. Um, what we're probably going to do in the future, I just don't have one right now on hand. We will probably put a volt gauge in there so we can at least read something. Um, but the only good thing about this truck is, is the wiring hasn't been too terribly torn apart. I really didn't want to split the loom and run some non-factory wiring. So for my purposes and for this truck, that's a perfectly acceptable way for me to bypass the uh, and meter. It works well for any, anybody else, too, that wants to do it quickly if you're afraid of a dash fire. Um, you just It's kind of unnecessary to have the wire running all the way inside and all the way back out when you could just eliminate it here. Regardless, um, if you're going to be running a lot of electronic components straight off of your battery on your full-size Jeep, Probably a good idea to uh, bypass that and meter just to be safe. It is a 40 year old component. In my case, I feel as though it's definitely necessary because that hydraulic pump is pulling some amperage and uh, it's definitely going to be draining that battery and it's going to be charging hard afterward. And the potential of when I'm using this thing, having to dump it multiple times a day, it takes about 20 seconds to go up and 20 seconds to go down. And uh, that's a lot of wear and tear on a battery. A lot of time that the alternator is going to spend charging it at those high amperage loads. So no sense to uh, have a potential component that could become a resistor and create a hell of a lot of heat in my charging circuit, in my opinion. So y'all have a good one, and uh, hopefully we won't have a dash fire.